Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Fear the Lord, all you his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. But they that seek the Lord shall not be deprived of any good. Words taken from the gradual for this All Saints Day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. St. Teresa of Jesus, the great Carmelite mystic and doctor of the church, she liked to say, in the company of saints, we become saints. What a fantastic saying. What a deep and profound saying. In the company of saints, we become saints. This life is all about practicing for heaven, where we hope to live in this company of saints forever and ever. This life is all about claiming a place in heaven, but how we respond to the graces sent us by God. It is passing the test, getting to heaven. It's the entrance exam, this life, to heaven. This life is all about becoming a saint, in other words, and that takes work, practice. Thus, St. Philip Neri said often, the great thing is to become a saint. But how? We keep company with the saints. That's how. Those in heaven and those striving for the same here on earth. Let us be a little more precise by drawing upon the meaning of St. Teresa's phrase, in the company of saints, we become saints. So in the company of saints, we find them that they, well, they read good books. You notice that? They always read these certain books. A lot of them did. Very common books in the history of the world. Come to find out these books are written by, yes, saints. Thus, St. Philip Neri said we should always be about reading books whose author's name start with S. St. Augustine. St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Ignatius, these are still being discussed today, still being looked over and mulled over because they're timeless. And the saints read them. How about St. Francis de Sales, St. Teresa? Do you want to be a saint? Read what the saints wrote and read them often. We should always be about reading their lives or what they wrote. So if you can't read what they wrote, then read about them. In renovating this chapel, this church, we consulted the works of St. Charles Borromeo a lot. I hope you noticed. Why is this place so beautiful? Because a saint was involved. In the company of saints, we find they dress very modestly. Heaven always shows them in long robes, as we heard from the Apocalypse. And when they lived here or when they visit here from heaven, they always appear fully covered. Sadly, so many in our times either want to be fashionable, which is understandable, or they just want to do the bare minimum, what they can get away with. Now, looking around at the saints, this is not something they approved of or something they did. They didn't use it as a principle of their life. Clothing always helps to define who and what we are. Those who just dress the minimum are stating something about themselves. I just want to do the minimum. I'm on the very line. Maybe I'm crossing over at times. Woo. Is that what we are? The risky, revolutionary kind of a person? We define who we are by what we wear. That's important. That's one of the ten categories of Aristotle that help us define what a thing is. The tenth category is habit, what we wear. The saints are noted for what they wear. It defines who they are. Want to be among their number? Let's dress as they did and still do, modestly. Now in the company of the saints, we find they speak well and without fear of human respect. They always seem to say the right thing at the right time and in the right manner. That's the hard part. 
They didn't complain or blame everybody else for their problems. Think of Job on his dung heap, lost everything except his wife and his life. And he didn't point the finger. It's the Sabaeans did this to me. It's all their fault. Nope. Never escaped his lips. He knew all was allowed or said by God. Notice how well he used his tongue. You want to be a saint? We need to strive to control our tongues, our speech. We need to do what the saints did, and that is to suffer well. In the company of the saints, we find that what they did and, and what they still do are difficult and arduous things. It's one thing about a saint, they have heroic virtue. They did things that were not popular. They rarely, if ever, approved of mitigations or letting things slide. They didn't just go along to get along. They didn't float downstream. Dead bodies float downstream. They fought the current. They swam. They worked at it. They were unpopular. They always strive to take the higher path, ever focusing on the peak, the summit of union and perfection with God, who is perfect love. Thus, not even death, however painful, seemed to hinder them. Want to be a saint? Want to be among them? We should strive not to excuse ourselves from difficult works and mortifications fitting to our state in life, but to embrace them, ever seeking to please God and be numbered among his chosen ones. A few more. In the company of saints, we find they made history, didn't they? That's why they're fantastic people. They were there for God at a crucial moment in the history of the world. All down through time, they're saints making things happen. Moments where many fell back afraid to do the difficult thing, to take the stand for truth, goodness, and right. History is about saints. And they took a whole trainload of people into heaven with them when they made that thing happen. You want to be a saint? Be not afraid to stand fast in doing good and defending the rights of the church. You will not be alone. Saints are here. Saints are present. They've been known to come out of the sky to help out. And finally, in the company of saints, we find that they pray well and often, even all the time. Everything became a prayer to the saints. They would not start anything without praying for divine assistance and never quit anything without thanking God for his graces. They would not do anything that could not be offered up to God as a prayer. If this cannot be offered up to God, I don't want to do it. I know we struggle, but that's what we should be striving for. They are constantly aware of God's presence and communicate with him at special moments of the day making morning prayers and night prayers and daily meditations and praying the Holy Rosary. Saints, pray. Heaven is one long sigh of love, of prayer. If you want to be a saint, you need to pray. There are more things we could reflect upon, but I think you see the point. Heaven is not something easy to attain, but must be taken by violence. Doing violence to ourselves, first and foremost. Not later, but now. What is more, we have no excuses. We have right here in this parish, in this chapel, this church, all that the saints had. It's all here. Let us embrace them, these means that have been given to us by God, with our whole heart, so as to pass the entrance exam of heaven and enter into the company of the saints forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.